there are big differences between me and the other candidates. Gary Johnson is back after a brief flirtation with seeking the Republican nomination for president. He's now the Libertarian Party nominee for president. Welcome, Governor. John, thank you. All right. Let's start. What led you to leave the Republican Party, uh, whose banner you carried twice in the land of enchantment and twice won the governorship, uh, to carry the Libertarian banner in what is sure to be a close and hard-fought presidential race? You know, I think that the message that I'm delivering is the same as that of Ron Paul's, and I think the message that I'm delivering right now is representative of the fastest growing segment of American politics today, and that's those that would describe themselves as libertarian. Now, I'll point out the obvious. Uh, a lot more people describe themselves as libertarian as opposed to voting libertarian. Uh, I'm trying to uh, make the pitch that vote libertarian this one time. Give me a chance just one time. And if it doesn't work out, why, we can always return back to uh, the politics of old. But. Uh, there's a, there are big differences between me and the other candidates, and without me in this race, these issues, in my opinion, don't get addressed at all. So I'm the only candidate that doesn't want to bomb Iran. I'm the only candidate that wants to get out of Afghanistan, bring the troops home now. I'm the only candidate that's talking about true marriage equality being something that is constitutionally guaranteed on par with civil rights of the 60s. I want to end the drug wars. I want to repeal the Patriot Act. I would have never signed the National Defense Authorization Act. I want to see a balanced budget now. Uh, I am proposing elimination of the Internal Revenue Service, income tax, corporate tax, replaced by a one federal consumption tax. Big, big differences between me and the other two. Uh, and if we don't embark on these differences, if we don't bar embark on these solutions, in my opinion, uh, we're going to find ourselves with a collapsed government. How could you govern in which the Republicans and Democrats uh, control the different chambers and there's no true independent at all? So getting along in Congress, getting along in legislatures is really code for how do we spend more money? And I don't have any intention of, of getting along, uh, but uh, I find in an I find it an exciting notion to challenge uh, Democrats on civil liberties, something that they're supposed to be good at. Look, let's bring about marriage equality. Let's end the wars. Uh, let's end the drug war. Uh, let's get our troops out of Afghanistan immediately. Uh, I see it an exciting notion to challenge Republicans on dollars and cents, uh, balancing the federal budget now, reforming taxes now, making it simpler. Uh, it's what they're supposed to be good at, but they're not so good at that either. And then, John, don't discount the power of the executive without any legislation whatsoever when it comes to appointing the heads of all the agencies. In essence, the executive controls all rules and regulations without any legislation whatsoever. Rules and regulations can get better on a daily basis as they did in New Mexico with just a basis in common sense. So you would use the executive order to achieve some of the items on your agenda? Well, uh, executive order, uh, in essence, the President of the United States controls all rules and regulations. Rules and regulations can get a whole lot better very quickly, and that's through the use of uh, executive orders. That's the fact that the President uh, points the heads of all the agencies. 